Uh, we now go to the gentleman from New York, Mr. Lawler. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Director, thanks for uh, being here today. And uh, you're here today at a time of significant economic concern. Concern uh, continues over inflation, uh, rising uh, rates, families struggling with expenses. I know some of my colleagues have alluded to significant concerns about the effects of regulations coming out of your agency and the potential cost-benefit analysis. And clearly, we have serious concerns about how you are ensuring the cost of regulations and other CFPB uh, actions do not outweigh any potential benefit, particularly since those costs will likely be passed on to consumers. The fintech sector uh, has helped to provide credit access particularly for low and middle income individuals. Uh, and many of these providers are also pioneering strong consumer protection. I'm concerned that overly broad regulations threaten to kill innovative law-abiding uh, fintechs. Uh, registration of non-banks, for instance, or 1071 small business lending rule. Uh, what kind of cost benefit analysis is the CFPB engaging in to make sure that you are not harming vulnerable consumers uh, in the name of protecting consumers? Well, certainly with respect to rulemaking, we're under certain obligations to publish. It's a regulatory flexibility analysis, including to look at where the costs are. You know, sometimes when it comes to benefits, benefits of getting a credit report corrected, avoiding an illegal foreclosure, it can be hard to estimate, but we comply with all of that. And let me just share, I agree with you that we want all sorts of companies, particularly small and new ones, to be able to compete against the big guys. And ideally, rules, including laws that you pass, can be clear and even bright line so that they are, there's not ambiguity about it. And sometimes we strive for that, but often the laws that are passed, new situations come up. And we are trying to figure out how to make sure that those small and nascent players can really compete to the benefit of everyone. So are there instances where you could see low and middle income consumers being harmed by an overly aggressive CFPB regulatory regime? Well, certainly any sort of, I've seen many instances, I used to be a commissioner at the Federal Trade Commission and that agency many years ago used to have a history of targeting small businesses who couldn't defend themselves, strong arming them into settlements. And you know, that kind of fear, obviously that could impact those entrepreneurs and those consumers. So do you see that happening now at the CFPB? No, actually what, one of the things we've, we've made sure we've done is we really try to focus, especially on the enforcement side, repeat offenders, large players, those who know they were engaged in the wrongdoing. We also make sure that in our supervision program, we're really tailoring it based on risk and not overburdening. So, you know, again, I take the feedback seriously. We obviously always need to push ourselves to make sure that the system is serving everybody well and there's fierce competition. Uh, previously, uh, the CFPB's Office of Innovation was focused on encouraging consumer-friendly innovation by creating approved uh, safe harbors, removing barriers to entry, and enhancing competition in the marketplace. In 2019, the CFPB rolled out several policies, including the Compliance Assistance Sandbox Policy and the No Action Letter Policy to facilitate compliance and promote innovation. Just three years later, however, the CFPB rescinded these policies entirely. Why did the CFPB reverse its decision to help uh, emerging fintech companies enter the market, especially considering the Bureau's focus on the importance of competition? So uh, just so you know, pretty recently, we've made sure that some of those programs are still doing work. We approved an application um, for those representing small banks on construction loans to do alternative uh, alternatives, and, and we're going through that process some of the programs you mentioned, we did a review of, and they basically did nothing um, to spur innovation or competition, and we found that the recipients of those letters were in some cases marketing themselves as endorsed or approved. So I think what we're focused on is programs that affect lots of market participants, but don't crown you know, one winner. You know, Government shouldn't be picking winners and losers like that. 
My, uh, my time is expiring. I yield back.